Bad things happen to everyone and they make us feel bad. To get rid of the bad mood, we need to put all of our efforts into fixing our issues. That's what we believe. The truth is, however, not like that. If concentrating on your issues and attempting to solve them with all the strength you possess works, then why do you still have so many? If the usual way of solving problems works so well, then why do our lives seem to be made up of problems that just keep coming up one after the other like abacus beads? We may or may not be aware that part of the problem is that we think life is hard and that nothing good comes without work. We also think that putting your nose to the grindstone is the only way things can change. Taking that view of life is really sad and depressing and I'm going to make a case for a different one. Why the usual way of solving problems doesn't work. Let's start with a story that many of us can relate to. Let's say you're having trouble with money right now. It's possible that you don't even need to imagine it because you have them already. A lot of us had or still have this problem. That's why we all know this feels bad. Stress, worry and anxiety are all bad things that can happen when you have a money problem. We do what we've always been taught to do when we have a problem. We focus on it and try to figure out a way to solve it. But there are two problems with this way of solving problems. One, stress, worry and anxiety get worse. Two, we don't always find a good solution. You can see why these two things happen when we look at what the focus on the problem approach does. Because not having enough money makes us feel anxious, worried and stressed, the more we think about it, the stronger these feelings become. The way we feel about our problem state is through these bad emotions. We don't like this state. We want to move from the state of the problem to the state of the solution now. You see, we can't get to the solution because our whole system is broken. To use Albert Einstein's words, we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used to make them. I'd change this quote a little to say, we can't solve our problems when we're in the same mental state we were when we made them. A lot of the time, we can't figure out how to solve a problem because our attention isn't where it should be. So what's the matter? Nothing is wrong with not having enough money. What's wrong is how you're feeling. Some experienced pragmatic students are already calling me a fool for saying that, but bear with me for a moment. Take a look at it this way. What's the worst thing about having money problems? It's not the amount of money in your bank account. It's the bad feelings, like stress, worry, anxiety, etc. Just because you feel bad makes you see everything as a problem, no matter what you think is wrong with the world. Those of us in the West who say we have money problems aren't really hungry. Most of the time, it's because they don't have the same lifestyle as other people. What I mean is, picture for a moment that you would be completely happy and at peace with your life. Does it matter what's going on? Do you still feel like you need to solve your problem right away? Before you say it, yes. You can be happy and peaceful even if you don't have the things you think you need so badly. The other way around is also true. Take a look around if you don't believe me. Even though most of us have a lot of nice things and comforts, we are still worried, sad, stressed, angry and so on. Look at this. Everything that goes wrong is because you don't like how you feel. Now what if changing how you feel would make your problems go away? An alternative way to solve problems, you'd rather not worry so much. You don't like being sad all the time. When you work hard to solve your problems, you never seem to be done. Instead of using all your mental energy to try to find a solution and getting stuck in your bad mood, why don't you just stop? What if you forget about the problem and focus on something that makes you feel good? Think about how you'd feel if the issue were resolved and then feel that way. Keep going back to that feeling, peace, joy, happiness, abundance, etc every time you start to worry again. It's possible. Take a look at your life if you think this idea is crazy. Think about the most important issue you're facing and how long you've been using the standard method to solve it. Think about how much pain and misery you have caused yourself by thinking about this problem for hours on end. If worrying and thinking about it all the time is the answer, then why haven't you found the answer two years ago? 
Some people worry for 16 hours a day. Isn't that the crazy thing? I think you should make this an experiment. Change the way you look at your life. Now is not the time to talk about your problems again. Instead, focus on how good you feel. Take a deep breath and remind yourself that everything is okay right now. There's no problem. There's nothing that needs to be changed or done. Bring your attention back to the peace you can feel at any time. Try this as an experiment. For just one day, whenever you catch yourself worrying or focusing on a problem, stop, pause, take a deep breath and remind yourself that in this moment you are okay. There's nothing urgent that needs to be fixed. You are enough as you are. You're safe. You're alive. You're breathing. And that is enough. The beauty of this practice is that it brings you back to reality. The actual reality, not the one your mind creates based on fears and anxieties. The reality of this moment is always neutral. It's your thoughts that color it with worry, stress or fear. But when you step out of those thoughts, you find that right now, in this exact moment, life is perfectly fine. It's like that famous quote by Eckhart Tolle. Realize deeply that the present moment is all you have. Make the now the primary focus of your life. When you do this, something shifts inside. You stop chasing happiness and start experiencing it in real time. You stop thinking you need to achieve something to feel at peace and you realize the peace was there all along, just waiting for you to notice. This doesn't mean you'll never have goals or aspirations. It just means you stop putting off your happiness until those goals are met. You realize that you can feel good and still work toward what you want, but now you're no longer desperate or frantic. You're not trying to escape the present because you've realized the present is where your power lies. This doesn't mean to hold back your feelings. You've likely done that for most of your life. Don't spend your time justifying, wallowing, or getting worse in your painful emotions. Just feel them and let them be. Do not make them bigger than they are. Worrying is like being hooked on drugs. Give yourself 15 minutes a day to worry if it's hard for you to stop right away. But don't worry for the rest of the day. Don't worry about your worries at all. When you feel like your experience in each moment is getting better, you'll be happy to cut down on your worry time to zero. Try it out. What could possibly go wrong? Things are still the same outside, but you don't feel bad. It looks fine to me. However, what about reason and thought? Please don't get me wrong. I'm not telling you to give up your mind and stop thinking. I personally enjoy thinking and good thinking is based on reason. Problem is not being able to think. The problem is that you've been thinking the same things over and over again for years without any reason. When you think this way, your emotions control your thoughts all the time. Thinking clearly is possible when emotions don't get in the way. In addition, a lot of us deal with the same problems throughout our lives because the feelings we have about them affect how we think about them, which in turn makes the problem worse. Let's not be crazy for a second, which makes more sense. 1. Living a life full of worry and stress, hoping that your problems will go away one day so that you can feel better. If they don't, you'll waste your life worrying and never enjoy what you already have. 2. Do you want to feel as good as you can right now and then base your life on that? Once more, thinking is great. But not every thought is the same. Thinking about bad what-if scenarios is what makes you worry and it does nothing but hurt your health. Worry is ridiculous, as Terence McKenna put it. It's important to act though, right? Should you have a problem and know just what to do to fix it, then go ahead and do it. But if you were sure of what you needed to do to solve your problem, why do you still have it? I think that action is not the answer, which is not what most people think. No amount of action from the outside can fix a problem that starts inside. That doesn't mean that taking action can't fix things. In other words, taking action won't make you worry-free. Even though you're scared and worried, maybe you'll work hard and make a lot of money. Then what? Do you think your mind will be nice to you now? No way. Now you can worry about how to invest your money, keep it safe, 
or keep the government from taking it. After you figure out one problem, you quickly move on to the next one. We would have already solved all of our problems if taking action was the answer. Take a look. It looks like no one is getting anywhere because everyone is in a hurry and having a hard time. You must already be tired, right? Then why would failing even more be the answer? Maybe the answer is to take a break from all this crazy stuff and think about what you really want. Is taking action really the answer? If action alone could fix everything, wouldn't we all be problem-free by now? Everywhere you look, people are rushing, hustling, and trying to get ahead. Yet few seem to feel truly content. It's exhausting. And if you're already feeling tired and burned out, is pushing yourself harder really going to solve anything? Probably not. Take a step back for a moment and ask yourself, why are you doing all this in the first place? Do you actually know what you want? Or are you just reacting to the pressures and expectations around you? When was the last time you stopped to think about what truly matters to you? Sometimes, in all the chaos of trying to get ahead, we forget to check in with ourselves. We're so focused on keeping up with others or avoiding failure that we lose sight of our own desires and values. Want to be happy? It doesn't matter what you say. You need to be pleased always. The most important thing is to understand that happiness can happen now or never. Here's something to think about. Right now you could be happy forever, but you'll never get what you think you need to be happy. You won't get the house, yacht, island lover, giraffe as a pet, or anything else you need to be happy. But you'll be happy no matter what. This little test could help you see that you don't want to be happy. You need this to make you happy. But nothing can make you truly happy. Make up your mind now. You think you need something to be happy, or would you rather be happy no matter what? Here's the thing, and I know it sounds almost too simple, but the truth is that happiness isn't waiting for you in the future. It's not locked inside that dream house or a fat bank account. It's available to you now. It's always been there, but we tend to overlook it thinking that we need some external thing to unlock it. But what if, and this is important, what if nothing will actually bring you happiness? What if happiness isn't something you get, but something you allow? A quote that might resonate here is from Buddha. There is no path to happiness. Happiness is the path. This idea can be mind-boggling because it goes against so much of what we've been conditioned to believe. We're told to hustle, to achieve, to accumulate, and then, and only then, will we be happy. But life isn't like that. You could spend your whole life chasing things and never feel truly happy for more than a fleeting moment. Why? Because happiness isn't tied to things. Let me ask you this. How often have you thought, I'll be happy when, followed by some condition you think will bring happiness? I'll be happy when I get a promotion. I'll be happy when I find the right partner. I'll be happy when I have a certain amount of money. But here's the real kicker. What if those things never happen? Does that mean happiness is forever out of reach? No, of course not. Because happiness isn't contingent on what happens externally. It's entirely an inside job. A lot of us believe that to be happy, everything has to be just right. Most of us believe that our happiness depends on many outside factors that we can't change. Why do so many of us only have a little happiness in our lives? People have told us that we can't be happy if things aren't going the way we want them to. That doesn't help anyone, but many of us think we need to suffer with other people. Don't worry about any of that. Your happiness is the most important thing you can do for the world. I can say from personal experience that when you live your life this way, many problems solve themselves in ways you can't plan for. One more thing before I end this, in case you're still not sure or angry about what you've read. It doesn't matter if you think this will solve your problems or not. Take a moment to enjoy your happiness and see what happens in your life.